In this video, we're going to look at CrossFit from the perspective of a breath instructor, and I'm going to introduce you to some concepts and some exercises that you can do to improve yourself, whether you are a CrossFit athlete, someone who just trains CrossFit every now and then, or even a CrossFit coach. CrossFit has always been a controversial fitness training methodology, partly due to the man who found it and his polarizing views and the way he talked about fitness, partly due to the way it was adopted by many people and then performed in what we might call dangerous ways, partly because it took over and got really popular really, really quickly, and maybe partly because CrossFitters talk about CrossFit all the time. Regardless of where you stand with CrossFit, you cannot deny its popularity, nor the effect that it's had on fitness training worldwide. It has, as well as many other things, reminded people of the need for broad capacities across the whole range of fitness requirements, not just strength, not just endurance, not just speed, but those three and many more. I got involved in CrossFit in the early 2000s, owned one of the first CrossFit gyms in Australia. So I've seen just about everything there is to see about CrossFit. One of the things that I've not really seen a lot of is anyone talking about the importance of breathing and how it can affect both performance and recovery for the CrossFit athlete. The first way that you can improve how you breathe in the gym and when you're doing CrossFit training and in fact when you're competing in CrossFit events is to improve your everyday breathing. The way you breathe every day will impact how you breathe in the gym. There is no sense focusing on breathing solely in the gym and forgetting about it during every other minute of the day because the amount of time in the gym, no matter how dedicated you are, is not gonna be as long as the time that you are out of the gym, unless maybe you're the coach. But in any event, you will need to focus on how you breathe during the day if you want to improve how you breathe while you're in the gym. So the first thing you can do, and this is true for anyone, CrossFit athletes, non-CrossFit athletes, is close your mouth and breathe through your nose. That is the start of functional breathing. There is nothing functional about mouth breathing. There is a reason that the term mouth breather is an insult. So the first thing that you can do is become more conscious about how you breathe during the day. Close your mouth and breathe through your nose. If you want to take this idea of nose breathing a step further and get about eight hours of nose breathing for free, then consider taping your mouth shut at night. Now, I don't mean getting a big roll of fabric tape and covering your mouth fully. I would suggest that you look at 3M Micropore paper tape, and all you need to do is cover a half, maybe even a third of your mouth just down the middle here. If you can't tape your mouth at night, tape it during the day until you get comfortable enough and then start taping at night. What happens is your nose will open up more at night and you will breathe through your nose for the whole night and you get all of that time of free nasal breathing. If your nose is blocked right now and you can't breathe through it or you're worried that it will stay blocked overnight and taping your mouth is something of a concern, have a look in the description, click on the link to the video that will explain to you the nose unblocking technique from the Buteyko method and that should help clear your nose. Now let's look at what you can do when you're in the gym. And specifically, let's talk about those exercises that require a lot of breathing. The hoppers, the 21 9s, the triplets, all of those kind of exercises and that programming that requires you to do different movements as quickly as you can or for as many rounds as you can. So we're looking at really ramping up intensity. It is in these workouts that you will get to a point where you will feel the need to breathe through your mouth. Now, what is really interesting to understand is for most people, if not all people, we can maintain nasal breathing up until around about 90% of our total athletic capacity. It's only that last little bit that will require a shift to mouth breathing. So the chances are that at the moment, you move to mouth breathing a little bit early. That's not necessarily wrong. It's just not as efficient and effective as maintaining nasal breathing. So number one, becoming more conscious, more aware of when you shift to mouth breathing will be very helpful. Something that you can try is just altering your intensity, seeing how hard you can go maintaining nose breathing all the time, 
and just get an idea of when mouth breathing becomes necessary for you. The more that you practice this, the better you will get at using your nose to breathe for longer in an exercise. Now let's just say that you really push yourself as you would when you're going for a personal best or you're in a competition and you do move to mouth breathing. And you need to do that because of the ramped up metabolic requirements of the activity. That's all well and good. Now, what you're looking at doing is recovering nasal breathing as quickly as possible. What it feels like is you need to breathe in more air to get more oxygen in. This isn't actually what's going on. You need to breathe out more carbon dioxide. So my suggestion to you is two to three bigger breaths out through the mouth to blow off that carbon dioxide and then return to nasal breathing in and out as quickly as you can. This will calm down your nervous system. It will get an adequate amount of oxygen in and an adequate amount of carbon dioxide out. You will actually recover faster this way. So much like nasal breathing every day, all day is important, returning to nasal breathing when you've exceeded your capacity to breathe through the nose and have moved to mouth breathing, returning as quickly as possible is very, very important and it will help your performance and your results. The last thing I want to talk about is the stress and potential anxiety about moving into a challenging workout. So sometimes even being in the gym looking at a workout like Fran can be stressful and it can be helpful to you to do some down regulation before that so you are mentally prepared for the workout. This ramps up even further when you move into competition and you get the jitters and maybe the fluttery tummy, maybe you get nervous because people are watching, maybe it's really important that you do really well. Again. Using breath can help you calm your nervous system down, downregulate your nervous system so you are mentally prepared for the work. What I suggest to you here is, again, maintaining nose breathing because that brings on functional breathing. It allows you to activate the diaphragm so you can breathe deeper. And then think of three things. Think of breathing light, breathing slow, and breathing deep. So we just talked about deep, that's activating the diaphragm. Let's go backwards. Slow is just slowing down the rate of the breath. So it's not fast, it starts to slow down. You're taking less breaths. There are less cycles in and out each minute. And light is reducing the amount of air volume coming in with each breath and therefore going out with each breath. These all lead to functional breath practice, which can move into how you're breathing when you're working out. But what it does in terms of stress and anxiety is it just calms everything down. Because you're breathing in that way, the body is calm and via the vagus nerve, your brain gets the information that you are in a calm state and then all of a sudden you feel calmer. Okay, one more thing, one more thing. So we've talked about calm beforehand, but what about in competitions when you're between workouts? Sometimes there is a quick turnaround. A couple of ideas here. One, limit the amount of talking that you do between workouts so that you can focus on recovering your breathing and calming down your nervous system. So at the end of a workout, again, you're aiming to return to nasal breathing as quickly as possible, but then you can focus on particular breathing techniques that work for you, calm everything down. You can work on breathing light, slow, and deep. That will definitely help. However, that does calm the nervous system. So what I would suggest just before you move into your next wad, that you do some short holds, and then a series of longer holds to move yourself into a more alert state so you are really prepared mentally and in your nervous system to get going and to activate in that wad and also just hit the flow state as quickly as you can. If you need a little bit more information on that, please subscribe to the channel, head over to my channel now. There's over a hundred videos all about breathing and you'll be able to find stuff on all the different topics that will relate to you and your endeavors to become a better CrossFit athlete. That's it for me for this video. You are welcome to leave a comment in the description. There is a link to get in touch. Please, again, like the video, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, breathe easy, and I'll see you next time.